looking from uh, this to this and if this is something that you're really interested to learn because i think that is something that you really have to know how to color grade an image properly without losing some of the details in the picture i welcome you today and let's get started so to get started this is the way the image should look and what i'll do i'll come here and click reset and the image is back to the way it should be looking so what i'm going to do here i have so many options i've taught this in my classes before about all these tabs so i'm and on details like on how each and every tab works but as along the way you're going to learn some of the tabs that i normally like to learn and you're going to see some of my workflow in this tutorial i'm going to use capture one pro this is 22 version and but feel free to use whatever version you are you're having in your computer so to get started here i might start to click the auto adjust here just to see what the this uh, software will do for me by auto adjusting and all these ticks i've ticked all this and keystones not for now so I'll click auto adjust and automatically it does me this good i might use this one for now really good but um if this is something that you really love to do because it has done pretty much of good work here but some adjustments should be made so what i'm going to do here i will just reset this is not the way that i wanted to be done because i think this is a robotic way of doing things but i wanted to show you the manual way of doing all these things so what i'm going to do with here i will start by click creating a new adjustment layer which is new field adjustment layer here and this is the layer that i'll be working on so to get started here i'm seeing the pictures are a little bit dark so i might need to increase the exposure because i think it's underexposed and i will increase up to that point maybe for now the contrast i might reduce the contrast increase the contrast just a little bit but i don't like working with this contrast there's another contrast i like working whenever i'm dealing with capture one pro but for now let's stick with that contrast might increase the brightness a little bit make sure not to increase it a lot because if you increase it uh, it might reduce the the overall details in the picture especially when it comes to the white and the image will be warning you can see if i click exposure warning you can see some so let me just turn it off for now but let me reduce it the saturations you might increase the saturation a little bit but not lots because if you increase it a lot this will be the result you might think the picture is looking good but it's not as you can see it's not really looking good so you might want to pull down this saturation a little bit maybe up to that point we've accomplished so much for now if i come here and click before and after which is the same as click clicking wire this was the before and this is after as you can see the image is looking really good but we are yet to do what we came here to do so i'll close the exposure then i'll go to high dynamic range i like reducing the highlights in the picture it kind of reveals the information if you can see lots of information will be will be revealed whenever like, i take the highlights i also like taking the whites away this helps me to see more of the image the details in the image the the black i might in reduce it because if i increase it now now the image it might look good for your liking but for my liking this is not what i wanted to the picture to look so i tend to reduce the details in the picture but i think if i reduce too much that would be the effect so making it 
as a way because I want to retain the pieces of the hair that you can see here. I might reduce it. It's kind of increasing because I'm still in the positive number. If you look at this, I might take it up to that point. Or if you tend to reduce it this way, increase the shadow. This will have kind of the same effect. And as you can see, we have done pretty much of work here, but we're still going on. The next thing we're going to touch is the clarity. The picture has lost a lot of clarity because it's an image from uh, Google. So I might increase the clarity. The clarity is basically the sharpness, but there's another sharpness just down below, which I will also deal with it later. But make sure not to turn the sharpness all the way. Sato is the key. If you turn it all the way, it will lose the meaning. And the picture will look as if it's a kind of a, an image from somewhere. So I will just increase maybe two, two, three, just good. Then I'll close the clarity. Then I'll go to the levels here. I love re dealing with the, le uh, with the clarity in the levels because now it helps me to make the, the picture look more outstanding. So I'll reduce this side here also increase the bright side of the image the highlights and for now i think the image is looking way good now i will just cross there i've not done lots of adjustment there because if you do lots of adjustment it will look really bad so let me take it up to there i think it's just nice looking there then i'll cross the levels come black and white i'm not going to touch it because i don't want the picture to be black and white if this is your image that's okay but for me i'll just leave it the way it is because i need a colored image color balance i might not touch it because i think i've balanced my colors well when it comes to the shadows and the highlights but feel free to explore all these things whatever they mean you might want to explore and see what it will look like whenever like, you touch them. I've touched um, the mid-tone and I've turned it to, towards the yellow or the orangish color because I think the, the whole model, the model looks more of a yellow to orange color and not the white as they are referred as Caucasians. So the next thing I'm going to touch is the sharpness which I was dealing with the clarity here. This is where you need to be very careful as well. You don't want to turn it all the way. It looks really bad. So the best thing is just to leave it as zero one. But it depends on the image as well. But my image is sharp. So if I if you if I'm very it's very sensitive when it comes to sharpness, so I might leave it at one. Then I would not touch with the radius, the threshold and the hero surfer because I think whenever like you you adjust the radius now it will look the way like maybe I didn't want it to look at look at so I will just turn it way to that point the threshold if you turn it well in my, some of the information here you might not know what it they will look later but whenever I like you print this picture it, later the picture will not be looking nice and it will look as if it's been drawn with a pen. I think I later I later leave it for now. The noise reduction, very important whenever you've taken pictures with a very high ISO. But for my picture now, I think the ISO is just good. The, the way looking at it, I don't need to do anything in noise reduction. So I will leave that as well. The lens correction, you might want to explore this, but for my pictures, really nice. You can use the diffraction correction, but I don't like using it whenever like my picture is taken with the right uh, information, the right statistics. I don't like uh, doing the lens correction because it doesn't have like any distortion. And when it comes to the vignette, I will just deal with the vignette that is just here below. So the next thing is just to touch with the vignette on the right side. Uh, makes the edges of the picture to look white which i don't like so i take i rather take it to the negative side and which helps me to kind of focus on the side on the middle side of this 
image but careful because if you take it way down the in such an image where the object the head of the object is kind of near the peripheral the corners it, it will look as if you brown you're darkening the edge so for now I rather leave it at that it's just nice and as you can see even leaving at that point this is what we've been able to achieve as you can see we've been able to color grade the image in a beautiful way and the other things in entails like looking at the film cranes and this is when you need to the picture to look as if it's from for a kind of a movie but the problem with this is that if, if you increase the film grains or rather if you introduce film grains the picture will look um you will introduce some noises in the picture and printing this picture later will look really bad the next thing you might look at is the base characteristics and in this i normally like to touch the curve and sometimes um actually not there it's um is in the vignetting i can know but without that i think for now i think the image is looking way good and i don't like uh, messing up with other things so with that i think the image is looking nice so this is what we've been able to color grade and achieve in the picture so I hope you've learned something in color grading, one or two things, and I'm hoping to see you in another tutorial. Till next time, bye bye.